so hello everybody and welcome to today's pb upskills my name is amanda paulie and i am deputy editor at professional beauty and today we've got a digital skills session for you with scott dance and it's going to be all about how to win new clients and revenue using facebook and instagram ads so today we're going to be streaming across all of our brands so that's professional beauty hairdressers journal professional beauty in hj island and also World Spa and Wellness. And Scott Dance, he's a digital marketing expert and founder of Salon Revenue Growth. And he'll be revealing how to create Facebook and Instagram ads that attract new bookings, including the direct response strategy that works best for salons. So you can bounce back stronger than ever when you can reopen. So hi, Scott, thanks for joining us today. Hi there, good to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. So just before I kind of let you take over, just to let everybody know who's watching on Zoom and on Facebook, if you do have any questions for Scott, pop them in the chat box and we're going to do a QA and a at the end. He's going to try and answer as many of your questions as possible after the presentation. So Scott, do you want to just try sharing your screen just before I switch mine off, just to check everything's okay and good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we go to uh, this one here. Okay, perfect. Okay, if I just try, sorry, if I go to this, can you see that one there as well? Yeah. That's all, that's very transparent. Yep, yeah, we're good. Yeah, you can see it all. So Scott, I'm gonna let you take over and do your session. I'll see you at the end for the Q&A. Fantastic, okay, speak okay, soon. Thanks, Amanda, that. thank you. <laughs> Okay, guys, so just really quickly who I am. My name's Scott Dance. I'm the founder of SalonRevenueGrowth.com. We are a digital marketing agency that works almost exclusively with hairdressing salons, beauty spas, beauty salons, skin clinics, and barbers. Um, and just what I'm going to be going over today is quite simply the best strategy that we run when advertising on Facebook and Instagram that is getting the, the salons that we work with the very best results. So let me, first of all, the, the, the procedure we run, we'll always, we'll almost, all, almost always advertise some kind of offer. This is the ads I'm going to show you today are specifically to bring in new clients to your salon. So we don't advertise them to your current Facebook following or anything. We're reaching out to effectively a cold audience bringing in new clients. So first things first, the thing that we always recommend uh, is a form of direct response marketing where you are advertising or promoting some kind of new client offer. You're going to get significantly better return promoting or advertising some kind of new client offer compared to just brand awareness ads where you're just promoting your brand and hopefully people see it and come. I'm sure if you've got any experience with any kind of advertising, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. Now, let me start. The, the, the typical process is we will, so the first thing we do is we'll create an offer. We will then create an ad. And one thing I really want to, uh, with this session, drill home here is, what do you do around your Facebook and Instagram ads? What happens before and after people click on your ads is equally as important as the ads themselves. Now I'm going to show you some ads that have gotten really good returns. So you can hopefully create ads that really grab a new audience's attention and get them clicking and taking action. Um, but what happens after they click on your ad is equally important here. So the process we always use is when they click on an ad, whether it be seeing it on Facebook or Instagram, regardless of you know, which platform, device, etc., it's going to lead them to a landing page where they're going to provide their name, uh, email address, and mobile phone number. They're going to submit their details in order to get automatically emailed the offer. Okay. Now, in order to do this, what we do is we will. I, I'm going to get a little bit techy here, and if, if any of the stuff is a little over your head, don't worry. To just make note. Uh, you can always ask me afterwards, or you can always uh, book a strategy session with me. I can go into more detail about this stuff. Or, I mean, if you're based in the UK, we're not, you're not going to reopen your doors for at least a month. Uh, you know, websites like Udemy, uh, online training sites like Udemy, they provide uh, your Facebook courses, Facebook advertising courses for you know, as little as £25. And uh, the, what you learn in these courses are just phenomenal value. What you're getting for like a £30 course it's just incredible value. And, and these skills, learning how to advertise successfully and do the right things when advertising on Facebook and Instagram is just an invaluable tool as a business owner. So you definitely want to use that. Okay. So we always lead them to a landing page and we will, that landing page we create, we will place a Facebook pixel 
on that landing page. So it records as a conversion whenever someone opts in. So when someone, someone clicks on your Facebook or Instagram ad, they lead to a landing page, which will look a little bit like this. Oh, no. No, hang on, where is it? That is an example of a landing page that we use. So, sorry, let me just quickly show you. This is, this is an ad we did for Arena Creative here. Now, that, what they were, they were advertising was 50% off their first visit valid to new clients only. And I'm going to provide uh, an example with 50% off your first visit for both a hairdressing and beauty salon. Then I'm going to show an ad for a slightly lesser offer where they were just providing, I think, 10 euro uh, uh, off their first visit uh, for, uh, for a salon based in Ireland. So just two types of one, one you, can, you can say big discount, 50% off for first time visits, and another example that's not as big a discounting. So this was the creative that we, uh, this was the ad in its entirety that we created. So Arena were providing 50% off their first visit. We'll start straight away with a little bit of urgency. The offer ends soon, so don't miss this. Then what you'll notice here, we then go on to talk about what they've done, et cetera, sell them to a point and how they get the, the the voucher. Now you'll notice we then go straight into a bunch of customer reviews. In the ad description, we will always put in a lot of social proof, whether that be the strongest five-star reviews, awards that they've won, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all the reviews there. Now this is a carousel image that we created. I'm going to show you how to create this soon. Stop. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. And um, people can't see the ad and I actually can't either. Okay. We're just stuck on the screen that says um, Tiger Lily Nails and it just shows the offer, but we can't actually see the ad. Nothing okay. is changing on the screen. It's just what we're getting. Just a moment. So, okay. Ah, there, it's working now. Thank you, Scott. So, so that's for Tiger Lily, yeah? Okay, let's yeah. Okay, let's stick with that one. Okay, so this is Tiger, this is 50% off at Tiger Lily Nails. Uh, that was 50% off their first visit. Tiger Lily have two separate nail salons based in Bournemouth, uh, Wimborne and Westbourne. So this was the creative that we did for them. This is in the description of this ad. So talk about their awards, you know, a lot of social proof here. Saying things such as our expert nail technicians are obsessed with making every client's hands and feet look stunning and for a very limited time, they are giving 50% off their first bill. We then talk about the awards that they've won. And I was actually talking about a different example, that a screen that you obviously couldn't see, guys, but virtually the same, very similar in that we always provide any awards that they've won and a bunch of their best five-star reviews we will always place in the description of the ad. Because a lot of people, when they see this ad, if they're interested, they're not even going to read this. They're going to click on it and direct straight to that landing page. But... You're also going to get that, that percentage of people that aren't sure. They see it, it grabs their attention, but they're not sure if they want to opt in or, or, or take the action yet. Placing things such as social proof, like the best awards, five-star reviews, etc., that's going to effectively get the best percentage of people clicking on your ad and taking that first action. So we scroll down. A whole bunch of normally we put eight of five-star reviews. As a rule of thumb, we put eight of the best reviews. And this is a slideshow image that we've created. And I'm gonna, in the ads manager, I'll show you how to do this. It's actually very simple. It looks smart. It's just inserting three or four images and Facebook themselves will create, uh, will create a video. Their description, their title, the headline was 50% off your first visit at Tiger Lily Luxury Nail Salons, Wimborne and Westbourne. So what happens when people click on that learn more, it redirects them to this landing page Okay, <clears throat> where they're going to provide their name, email address, and mobile phone number in exchange to get automatically emailed the offer. Now, the offer is in the form of, that can simply just be an automatic email, and on that email, or it can be a PDF that you automatically email to them, on that email tour is going to be a very simple code that they must state when they book. And that can be something, you know, a typical code might be, for this might be Facebook 50, for, for an example. So whenever someone calls up to book the offer, they're gonna state that code. So you can then at the end of each month, you can look through your booking columns and obviously you can ascertain exactly how many people, how many new clients you're advertising and bringing in, how much new revenue it's brought in, just see how, hopefully, how profitable it is. 
So we always recommend this direct response process where you provide some kind of offer or incentive that sends them to a landing page where they provide their details. Now, just a note on providing their details, guys. It's generally, uh, it's generally thought that the least amount of fields you can provide, the better your opt-in rates. So therefore, a lot of landing pages you see, the potential client would provide just their name and email address. Here's what we've found though. We always will split test two landing pages where they will be identical, completely identical. The only difference is one of them will ask for a mobile phone number, the other will not. Now, after running, oh gosh, hundreds of these campaigns, split testing these different landing pages, we almost always find there is no drop off in the mobile uh, in the landing page that asks for the mobile phone number compared to the one that doesn't. So in more simpler terms, people don't mind giving you their mobile phone number. As long as if they are genuinely interested in what you're providing and they're genuinely like considering booking, they, they will provide their mobile phone number provided underneath you're keeping up with GDPR and you've got the tick box to state that they, they're opting in to, to your email list and your SMS subscribers list, but they can opt out at any stage. Okay, so that was there. Let's now go into the ad manager for this offer for Tiger Lily. Okay, we will always, when creating a new campaign, we want to do this, we will always set, well not always, but more often, almost always, we will create a new campaign set to conversions. We want it telling us exactly how much it costs for people to opt in, how much per opt in, how much per lead it's going to cost. Now, if, if, if things like uh, adding a Facebook uh, pixel to your landing page or just landing, this sort of stuff is, is, is not, you're not privy to this stuff yet, you could, the next best thing is you could just create a campaign set to traffic. And therefore it's gonna, it's just gonna tell you how much it's gonna cost per uh, link click. Now that's fine, it's it's not quite as, it's not, it's not as good as reading the conversions metric, but that's fine because Look, at the end of the day, the most important metric that counts here is how many new clients your advertising is bringing in and how much money it's making you, right? So if, yeah, at the end of the day, like at the end of each month when you're checking your reevaluating, if it's profitable, fantastic. So if, you know, if, if, if adding a Facebook pixel, it's not something you really know about, you want to keep it simpler or it's not something you're privy to, you can always set your campaign to traffic and it's simply going to tell you how much it costs per click. And the name of the game here is to try and over time drive that cost per click down. So we will set it to conversions. We will create a custom conversion that will simply, as I said earlier, will track, we'll call that email up to subscribers. So whenever someone hits the submit button and it goes to the thank you page, that will count as a subscription. That will count as a conversion. So if we now look at the Tiger Lily Facebook ad manager setup, this is the ad we were running for them. We now move on to the ad set. Now we will create typically two separate ad sets. The difference being is we will test two different audiences. Okay, so if I go to editing that ad set, scroll down. <clears throat> now if we go to an audience, the one audience we're currently using for Tiger Lily, is set the locations we have set to simply their towns only. And we, guys, we strongly recommend this. Um, if you are, I mean, if you're based in an average size, a medium for average size city or town, simply set your target location to that town or city only. If you're based in a big city such as London, where you know you've got a lot of people, a lot of footfall around you, we will select a location no more than three miles. So no one that's based with their mobile phones based within three miles, all their laptops based with it. No one outside of three miles from the salon is going to see these ads. The, the more condensed, the more targeted, the more reduced your location is, in theory, the better response you're gonna get because obviously the further, the further away people are that see your ads, the less chance, the less convenient it is for them to visit, the less chance they'll become a paying client, right? Makes sense. Now, we often get that some salons will speak with, particularly ones that are based in, say, smaller villages. If you are based in a tiny residential area, rather than setting to just that area, you go into the advanced settings. Jeez. 
You can then go, uh, wait, just a moment. Food. You can then search. Sorry, oh, sorry, because this audience is already fixed. So, but what you can do, you can then, if you're based in a small town or a very small location, you can then choose to go within from a five, a three to five mile radius from that location. We would only recommend doing this if you're based in a very small town or village, guys. Now, what we what we'll often get is. Sometimes someone will say to us, look, we want, to, we want you to advertise our ads to this town and this town and this town. And sometimes those towns are based, it can be within 10 to 15 miles from that location. We don't recommend this because even though it might seem really attractive to get clients from those locations, if you're only on a 10, maybe 15 or even 20 pound per day budget, you're going to get a lot more people take action and, and eventually book with you just concentrating your ads based within a certain region. Whilst the idea of getting clients from another town, neighboring town might seem attractive, you're just going to get a lot more conversions if you're targeting that specific town only. So for these two here, Wimborne and Westbourne, which are basically just small towns in their own right, we're just obviously, we're focusing on just those two. Now, this is what some people often find interesting. We've set the age here to 21 to 60. As this is a male salon, we've set it to woman only. That is the only targeting we've set for this particular ad set. So it's females aged between 21 to 60 based in their towns only. We've not filtered it further or targeted it further using any specific likes or interests. Now, the reason for that, we will always run, run ad set like this. And the reason for that, the reason why we deliberately keep it so open like that is Facebook is very good in its learning phase and learning exactly what type of people based on their interests, their behavior online, et cetera, are taking what type of, uh, what, what their behavior is. And it will display your ads to similar people. It has a learning phase where based on it, it, whoever's clicking on your ads and taking action, it will note the various, the, the behavior of those people and we'll start over time displaying those more and more to the same people. So, I mean, this is one of the reasons why Facebook's uh, advertising platform and Instagram, it's the same thing, obviously, the same carousel. This is why it's so, it's so successful because Facebook has become very good just by with its learning and uh, you know, with its various behavior and with its various algorithm in finding exactly what type of clients are interested in your ads and it will display them to more of the same people. Okay. So the only... That is the audience that we've run. Now, typically, we will create another audience. If I just go back into the headset here, we would duplicate this and create one more audience, and that audience would be a lookalike. Let's go duplicate that. Now, the lookalike audience, I won't run through this Let's go back here. But the audience that we do, the duplicate we make, Rather than running it out to just a, a, just a, a broad, you know, 21 to 55 or 21 to 60 year old range of people, we will create a lookalike audience where we will use Facebook's pixel that, that is either, uh, we will use the salon's uh, pixel based on their website. What it will effectively do is every time, if a salon has a pixel based on their website, it's basically taking the details of every person that visits their website. What we can do is create a lookalike audience of people that are very similar. So what you can do is create an audience of people that are very similar uh, to, to the people that are visiting your website, or we'll create a lookalike audience of very similar people that are following uh, their Facebook page. So you can create a, a lookalike audience of people that are following your Facebook page. We will split test those two, typically two separate audiences. One is just the open one, 25 to 55 year old, five year old, 60 year old, female, et cetera. And we will split test another ad set simply with a different audience. This one is a lookalike audience that is going to be people that are similar to either people that have visited your website or similar to those people that already follow your Facebook page. Here's the interesting thing. We, more often than not, we find the more open audience that is simply available to you know, any female age between 21 to 50 or 60 based in that town. More often than not, gets a better 
a lower conversion, it, gets, it produces the best results. And it just goes to show how, just how good Facebook's learning phase and how good uh, Facebook's algorithm is for tracking this. So that was the ad set. So I mean, again, if, if, if things like creating a lookalike audience and use of pixel, if that's not something that, uh, that, that you're necessarily privy to right now, just simply go with an open audience, 21 to 55 years old, a female, male. Location is very important. Keep to within your town. If you're based in a very small village, then perhaps you can stretch out maybe three or four or five miles from your location. Okay, and then just let Facebook's algorithm, let its learning process do its thing. If we now jump over to the ad. So we've moved from the ad sets, we're now into the ads manager. Now we brought to the ads, uh, the creative setup of the ads themselves. Now we, again, almost always will split test. Here's the two types of ads, guys, we find get the most response, get the best uh, click through rate. One is a slideshow video or just a video in general. The other one is a carousel of images. We find a carousel of images gets a much better response than just a fixed, uh, just, a, uh, just one fixed image. So let's click on the carousel of images. Okay, so Tiger Lily's Facebook and Instagram page. Of course, setting to their page, set to carousel. And with the carousel, you can simply, you're adding in, you've got, you can place anywhere up to five separate images. Each image is going to have its own headline and description. So this is where, now if you're, guys, if you're a hairdressing salon, a carousel, we strongly recommend trying a carousel of images. Don't be afraid to use your most extravagant colors for things like ices and, and blues and pinks and oranges. We find this gets some of the best click to rate just because firstly it demands attention, it pops out on people's screens. And uh, I mean, any hairdressers out there, maybe you can tell me why, you've probably got more experience than I do in this, but people just seem to associate extravagant colors with, uh, with, with success, with, with, with being a high quality establishment. So don't be afraid to mix in. I'll show you an example real soon of a, uh, of a, um, a hairdressing campaign that shows you when we use some of the more extravagant colors. So you can, with a carousel, you can insert three to four to five of what you deem to be your most eye-grabbing and quality pictures and create a different headline with each. So we'll go back to the first one. The headline is something to get 50% off at Tiger Little Nail Salons in Wimborne and Westbourne with the description being the winner of the UK, top UK nail technician three years straight. That was an award that they've won. Okay. And then if we go over to the second thumbnail or the second image, we have another and this headline, simply stunning hands and feet from our luxury nail salons for half price. This offer ends soon, don't miss this. So in this case, we've thrown in a little bit of urgency. Every one of our ads in both the ads themselves and the landing page will state somewhere, this offer ends soon or this offer close soon. Always use that guys, create a bit of urgency so it, you know, this is, so it, it motivates people to, to take action and click and, and uh, grab your offer. The website that it leads to, and then we have the primary text. Now, what you're looking at here is exactly what I showed you with this ad, with this particular ad. Okay, so if we now look at that here. Again, talking about, we'll always start in bold. If you want to know, if you want to know how to um, make some of your text, some of the opening text, the primary text in bold, use a website called Yay Text, Y A Y T E X T, Yay Text. Dot com. You can then add into a box uh, your wording, and that, that's what uh, that's how you create uh, one way to create bold text. Let me just go through again. Uh, uh, talking, speaking about how they're multi-award winning, we actually list their awards and some of their best reviews. Now, some people say that there's, uh, I, I hear this where people think, oh, primary uh, people. Uh, some people feel that in primary text that long copy is not effective. And that the more long, the longer the copy worth it, we found this not to be true at all. Because again, you'll get some people that will want to read this stuff before they decide to take action or not. So we really dial up the social proof here, the awards, the five-star reviews, et cetera, et cetera. When you're putting your best five-star reviews, guys, four, eight, I mean, we always use eight. Make sure you add the five stars with each one because it grabs people's attention, okay? That is the copy with that. That's the URL. That is the landing page that it leads to. The call to action, we will always put as learn more. 
uh, it's generally considered that gets the best click through right now. It's just a little bit more intrusive than saying book now or you know, learn more and that way they know that there's going to something where they can effectively learn more about the page and they don't have to necessarily sign up for something. Okay. And that, by publishing that, that is created this ad that you see here. And when people view it, hit learn more, they are leading to this landing page where they're going to submit their details. So this is all, so let me, just some principles here. Gosh, this, this half an hour has flown by, I can't believe it. Just some principles here, guys. When you're reaching out to a cold audience, um, we don't recommend boosting posts. If you're spending a lot of money on boosting posts with little response, it comes as absolutely no, uh, uh, no, uh, no surprise at all because when reaching out to a cold audience of people that are you know, a new client audience of people that don't, that much, don't know that much about you, firstly, you want a Facebook ad that's going to stick out on the page that is going to wow them. But then what happens afterwards, which is which I, what I, what I uh, alluded to at the start, what happens afterwards is equally as important. You want to consider, uh, continue that courting process. And that's with a landing page that hopefully continues to well. If I scroll down on this landing page, so we just dial up. We talk about the awards that they've won, some emblems, some photos of their salons, all their reviews. We just really dial up the, we do everything we can to dial up the social proof, awards, reviews, and et cetera, effectively to try and get as many people that visit this page to then go ahead, opt in, and become a lead as possible. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if I go back to the ads manager, let me show you. Amanda, can you now see, the, uh, is there a new screen now? Can you now see a landing page for the green room? Um, at the moment, it's still showing tiger lily nails for me. Okay, well, we'll keep to, uh, we'll keep to the tiger lily then, guys, just a moment. I'm using multiple uh, incognito. But I'll tell you what, if I just go back, and what I'm going to do, instead I'm just going to keep it all on one page. Right, now I want to show you a hairdressing salon. Yeah, that's changed now, so yeah. it looks like that's working, yeah. No worries, Scott. Brilliant. Okay, just a moment. Now, this is a hairdressing salon offer that we did for the green room, okay? So again, we would have split tested two ad sets, an open audience one and a lookalike. Okay, lookalike based on either looking a lookalike based on their Facebook followers or their web page if they've got a pixel already inserted on their web page. <clears throat> In this case, we would have, pres presuming we want to split test the two ads and the carousel was the better performer. Let's check out the ads really quickly. Right, so if I open this into my desktop here, can you now see my Facebook page, Amanda? Can you? There, yeah. there, yeah, we, there, are. there we are. <laughs> okay, excellent. Yeah. Right, this is the ad. This is now for the green room, which. So the first thing you'll notice is award winning green room, again, we have it involved, they're getting £20 off their first visit. So. Well, here's the, here's the offer here. They get £20 off their first visit, sorry, €20 Euro off if they spend seven, book services worth €70 Euro or more, or just €10 Euro off if they book £50 worth or more. So, firstly, much less of an offer than 50% off. And what I want to show here, guys, is you can run equally, you can run profitable campaigns. You don't, it doesn't have to be about big first-time visitor discounts all the time, okay? We've got some really good results with this one. Again, very similar in how we dial up the social proof, stating their awards. And don't worry, if you're not an award-winning salon, if you're a new business that's just getting started with this, just take your best, you know, five, six, seven, eight uh, reviews, throw them in there in the copy, and just, just do everything you can to dial up the social proof because the social proof is behind word of mouth. Social proof is the most influential thing in people deciding to book with one company and a not, uh, book with one company and, and others not. So keep that in mind. This was their carousel of images. You'll notice very similar to Tiger Lily. We, we, we follow a fixed pattern with this. And if we hit learn more, it directs them to the following landing page. Very similar in its layout, where people provide name, phone number, and, uh, email address, and mobile phone number. They click that, they will get automatically emailed an e-voucher 
on that e voucher will be a code that they must take. So by having that code, guys, this is the with the direct response. You should always have some, always know that it's your Facebook or Instagram ads that, uh, that, that, the, that it's these clients booking. So you should always be able to gauge at the end of each month. Yeah, how many new clients your ads are bringing in and if they're profitable or not. Now, let me show you something really quick. Well, I've still got a, I've still got a few minutes, so I'll just, <laughs> this half an hour has just flown by. Okay. Right. Let me go through exactly what you're looking at here. Now, the results for this campaign for the Green Room, we've had 66 e-voucher subscribers. 66 people have downloaded their e-voucher. The reach out of 11,470 people have seen the ad. The impressions is obviously the amount of times the ad itself is just displayed. So nearly on average, these 11,000 on average have seen this ad maybe, what's, what's my math here? I would say eight times, right about eight times. Now the cost for e to subscriber, this is actually set to US dollars. Their Facebook uh, account was in US dollars for some reason. Eight pound 27, which I believe is around about six, six, uh, six uh, 50 euros. It's cost them six, about 650 euros or eight, uh, eight US dollars, 827 US dollars to receive each opt-in. Now, the last the Green Rooms report reported, they were getting roughly about one in every three opt-ins. Then they'd had roughly from the 66 e subscribers, they had about 22. It's about a third of people had actually booked and become paying clients. Now, what that tells us is it's costing them around about 24 US dollars to acquire each new client. Now, let me give you some figures here, guys. Keep in mind their offer was just 10 pound off or 10 euro off if the new client spent 50 or 20 euro off if the new client spent 70, okay? That is still profitable for them because each new client, their average cost when they reported to me, the average spend per client was around about 50, 55 euros. So it's costing them about 24 euro to an ad cost to acquire each new client, they're getting on average around about 35 euro per client. So still profitable. They're just not getting the amount of opt-ins and new bookings as a 50% offer would. Remember the first one I showed you, Tiger Lily, their deal, their offer was 50% off for a new client. Now here's what we find. An offer like this, which is just a small incentive, 10 euro off if you spend so much or 20 euro off if you spend so much, that will get on average about a third to four times less than a 50% off for a first time guest, 50% off your first visit. I hope I said that clearly. Compare this uh, offer here, 10 euro off, if you spend 50 euro or more compared to just giving a first time guest 50% off their visit. The 50% off typically will get anywhere between three to four times more. People just can't, I mean, of course, this is the way up you have to, when, when, when uh, promoting an offer, I mean, what it comes down to is how many slots you have uh, that, you, that you fill in. If you want just two or three higher, you could argue higher quality clients uh, per week that are paying more, fantastic. Or if you're in a situation where after this lockdown, your bookings have just been decimated, which frankly, sadly, is what a lot of salons are reporting back to me. You just want you just want bums on seats, lots of traffic. There's you know, fifty percent off a first time visit of guests is going to get you significantly more than just than a lesser offer. So that just gives you an idea. Two different examples. Typically, the better the offer, the results in terms of new clients. It isn't linear. It tends to snowball, if that makes sense. So basically, you know, it's not a case of getting twice as many. You know, advertising thirty percent off compared to fifty percent off. You're probably, it's not going to be a case of getting twice as many new clients if, you're, if you go 50% off, you're probably going to get three times as more. It tends to snowball the better you offer. That's what we've found. Okay. So we now, after about a month of running these, we will then optimize. So typically we would split test a carousel and a slideshow of images. And by the way, I'm running out of time here, guys. A slideshow, you're simply taking, if you have a really nice promotional video, please split test it with a carousel to see which ones get a better, a better response, better results. But if you don't, you can create a slideshow of images, the exact same images you used 
in your carousel. You simply upload, select the slideshow function, upload those images and your logo, and Facebook will create a really nice looking uh, slideshow video. They'll do it for you. And it looks, it does look smart and it does get really a really good response. You're gonna get with a carousel of images or a video, whether that be your own video or a slideshow video, it's, it's, we find almost always it gets a much better response than just a single image ad. Right. Then, after about a month, we will optimize using the following. We will go into it, the breakdown by delivery. We'll look at the age and gender. And you'll see here. Okay. So, obviously, this was set to females, starting from 25 onwards. And if you look here, see how the cost per result. Now, the first thing that we notice is here, once we relaunch their campaign, you are getting, it is costing significantly more in the 25 to 34 year bracket to create a lead than it does the other. So the first thing, and that is significantly more. The first thing we will do when we relaunch their campaign, uh, but when it comes time for them to reopen, is we will pause the 25 to 34 year olds. Now, what I would say is not all clicks and not all conversions are created equal. And what I mean by that was, if you if we had an, if you had an ad running and one of your age brackets was 18 to 24 year olds, and that was getting a much the cost was much less per lead than 25 to 34 or 35 to 44, we wouldn't necessarily remove the 25 to 30, we wouldn't necessarily focus on the 18 to 24 year olds because without being, you know, without, without uh, discriminating or being, yeah, that's, you could argue, I think many salon owners would argue that they would prefer the people that come in, as a, they would see them potentially as a better long time client if they were, you know, a little older, if they were based from 30 year olds onwards. By and large, most 18 to 21 year olds are either students, or you could argue many of them are on a, are on a lower income bracket. So if, if there was, if certain age groups are slightly less in the cost per lead, or slightly more in the cost per lead, we wouldn't necessarily pause them because those, you know, they might still be, they, they might still, you know, they, the salon might still get plenty of them as uh, coming in as paying clients and they might be seen as better long-term regular clients. Now, in this case, this is so much disproportionately higher than the rest of these. When we go to relaunch this campaign, we will pause this group, remove it, and therefore their ads will only get seen by females that are 35 years and older. The other thing we will optimize for, if I get delivery, the other thing we will optimize for here, guys, is looking at the platform and device. And what this will tell you one thing, uh, it's one thing worth mentioning here. If you if you're looking at considering specifically advertising just Instagram ads or just Facebook ads, we don't recommend that because, long story short, the more you allow, the more the bigger reach you have across multiple platforms and multiple ad groups, the lower it's in general, the lower it's going to drive down your cost per impression or your cost per CPM. And the, the, the more you're allowing Facebook's algorithm to learn and put it in front of the right people. You might think I want to run ads for specifically for Instagram only. Because with doing that, you're severely limiting the reach. And Facebook still, by and large, still has by far the biggest audience, right? 60%, I think 60% of Instagram users are still under 30 years old. And the biggest concentration of Instagram users are still teenagers. So we, we, whenever a salon comes to us and says, can you create Instagram only ads? We'll always say, sure, but we don't recommend it because it's, I mean, it's all, why not test it and see where, I mean, you might find by keeping it open to both platforms, in actual fact, most of your paying clients and, uh, are actually coming from Facebook. So if you're ever considering guys, long story short, I don't want to go into too much boring detail here, but long story short, if you're thinking about what platform should I use Facebook's going to take all the guesswork out for you. It's going to, it's going to, play, it's going to find which devices, which type of people are, are taking action on your ads, and it's going to put it in front of more of them. So long story short, we recommend using all devices and all platforms. What we might be looking for here is, for example, if uh, going through the various, if we, if over time we see that disproportionately the cost per lead is significantly more on either Facebook or Instagram, then 
we might reduce them, we might uh, remove the one that is not performing, but give that time, and we're only talking significantly more. We, I, you want to leave that for at least a month, and it would have to be at least double the cost for one of them for us to even consider uh, reducing one, because but the ads work best when you've got the... Uh, and within, within reason, the ads work best when there's a bigger audience of people to see it. Okay. Right, we're, we're 40 minutes in already. <clears throat> One last thing. I'm certainly not, uh, I didn't realize how quickly this was going to go. One last thing, guys. When, so you've now created an offer. When people book, obviously they, they click on the ad that you've created a, an eye grabbing ad that's led them to a landing page where they provide name, number, and email address. Um, <clears throat> when they submit their details, they receive an automatic email uh, to, to receive the offer. They then, on that email, which was going to be a booking code or a unique password or code that they must state that they must quote in order to receive the offer. That allows you to track just how many new clients and how profitable your ads, uh, your, how, how profitable your ads are. When you have, when you've ascertained that your ads are very profitable, and, you, and when I say profitable, guys, what we define as profitable is the first time visitors spend more than easily eclipses your ad cost. Okay, so we're not even relying on rebookings here. Your first time, once your first time visitors spend more than eclipses your ad cost, we deem that as profitable. Now you can scale your ads, you can increase the budget and start turning up the volume and bringing in new clients. Okay. The best way to do this, if you start on just a five or 10 pound daily spend and your ads are profitable and you want to increase them, instead of bumping up, instead of doubling the budget for that, uh, for that ad set, instead duplicate it. Because long story short, when you, when you more than, I think it's more than 50%, when you increase the ad cost of an ad set by more than 50%, it throws Facebook's algorithm out of whack. All that learning that Facebook has, has done to learn what type of people to put your ads in front of that are going to get you the best response, that all virtually starts again when you increase your ad sets, ad spend by more than 50%. So in order to avoid this, there's two ways. Either just increase by 20%, so if you've got an ad, if you've got an ad spend of uh, ten pound and it's working, your, your ads are profitable. If you want to increase it, don't increase it by any more than ten percent. So you want to increase it by two pound. If you've got ten pound, it's increase it by two pound once every three days. Or if you just want to, if you're really happy with the lots and you just want to double your ad spend, simply duplicate the ad set. Do not uh, double the spend of your same of the same ad set, it will throw Facebook's algorithm out of whack. Instead, duplicate the ad set, and that just keeps it, it basically, it gets a, it just, it's gonna get you, a long story short, it's gonna, it's gonna get you much better results than doubling the budget of one. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Okay, well, we're, we're now, at, I've got 12.43. Um, I'm guessing it's, I should, at this point, I should probably shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, Scott, it's been really, really brilliant and really interesting, but we have had a few questions come through, which I'd love to sort of put to you before yeah, this yeah, yeah. question ends. Yeah, um, please. We had quite a lot of um, questions about landing pages, because obviously you showed that near the start, and we had quite a few yes. questions about how do you create a landing page and right, when yes, that's... you don't have one. Right, that's one that's that's on my list, and that's one thing I forgot to. It's very important. This okay. I've actually I wanted to cover this. Right, firstly, there are two the two best companies that we can provide that are going to allow you to create your own very simple free landing pages are Wix or MailerLite. MailerLite spelled M A I L E R L I T E. Now, Wix is a little bit more technical, but their free package allows you to create your own landing page. It's not going to be part of your website. It's not using the same domain as your website, but that doesn't matter. That, that, that's not, it doesn't need to be. With Wix, you can create a smart looking landing page and for free, they give you one automatic email. So when someone clicks submit, they, they you, uh, when someone clicks submit, you can send them an automated email that can just have the, the offer the offer code, the e-voucher can be in the body of the email. That is completely free of charge. MailerLite, they go one further. For your first 1,000 subscribers, you can create a free account. 
uh, that allows you to create a really nice looking landing page. And not only does it allow you to create an automatic email, so when someone hits submit, they automatically receive your email with your offer and your voucher code. You, sim you can also, in the automation tab of Mailer Light, you can create an automatic flow of emails. So literally, you create this at the start, you build your ads, someone clicks on your ad, they go to the landing page, they, they submit their details, they hit submit, they get automatically emailed the email chat, and they can receive an e a, a, a different email once every two or three days from you for the next 30 days. That's actually something we do. That's part of all our, we always put our leads onto a flow of emails because in that email flow, you can provide not only not only reminders that they should block, you know, the offer's only valid for all of the, all the offers we run, they will expire in 30 days. We state on the email, inf email information that the voucher expires in 30 days. Now, the salons don't even track this. It's, you don't need to. The only reason why we put that is we're creating urgency. People see it, right, it expires in 30 days. I better, you know, it just, it's, it's all done to uh, creating urgency to get people booking and, and visiting your salon. Um, so Wix and MailerLite will provide, allow free smart looking landing pages. Um, and both of them allow the facility when someone hits submit, they automatically receive an email, which is where you can have your offer on, on the email itself. And um, Scott, do you know whether you can use MailChimp to create landing pages? Yes, yes, you can. I've got Mail MailChimp and MailerLite are very similar in what they provide. I I'm pretty sure the last we checked, MailerLite, um, the, the good thing with MailerLite, in fact, I think MailChimp probably will do that as well, where you can create a free landing page and maybe one automatic email as part of their free account. So don't hold me to that. I don't use MailChimp a lot, but Mailer Light, on the other hand, what they let you provide for free is for, for your first 1,000 subscribers is just amazing, frankly. Mm. And um, yes, Mailer Chip do do that. They do. You can build any pages. And lots of people asking at the start because I think they just slightly missed it. Um, but you were talking about the name of that Facebook course um, that you think people should do. That was good. Yep. And they were just asking if you could um, repeat that. Yep. So it's um, so the, the website you want to use is Udemy. Yeah, that's, yeah, here comes my <laughs> accent here. It's uh, U D E M Y. Udemy. What Udemy is? Udemy is everything. It's it's online courses for everything and anything. And you, you just simply jump on Udemy, search Facebook courses, Facebook advertising courses, and, and this is again what the courses you get. They're all video modules. They're all online video modules, and you can just pause and you know. Um, and the value you get, what you learn for these courses that only cost, some of them are as cheap as 25 pound. It's just, mm. it's, and, and now's, and guys, now's the time to do it. Before your salon's open, yeah, you've still got a month. Now's the time you want to be learning about this stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah. fine tuning. And we had another question as well. And it was, um, would you say more amateur style content than sharp and corporate style creates more traction? Um... Oh, so, so corporate style, sharp and sort of compared to them. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure the core, I'm going to say the corporate sharp side, but just for the simple, the more, keep in mind here, you're, you're reaching out to a cold audience of most people, most of the people that are going to see your ads aren't going to know much or they're going to know virtually nothing about your business. The sharper and more professional it looks, and that's from the ads, to the landing page, etc., the higher your conversion rate's going to be. Mm. Yeah. And um, obviously, we've spoken a lot about salons, but there's quite a few mobile beauty therapists and hairdressers who are watching this, and they're just asking about, is there anything that they should do to adapt their ads, um, given that fact that they are mobile? Yes. So basically, don't... So when I showed you that ad set, uh, uh, the, the audiences where we sort of, because when you're a hairdressing salon providing a full menu, most salons have quite a broad clientele. You know, some will have a certain age group, in which case we can target that, et cetera. But you're looking for, I mean, I've, I actually used to uh, own a, a mobile hairdressing agency, and you're looking for a very, a much more select audience of people. So you can... Uh, the age groups we found on advertising, firstly, is... Uh, uh, we found the older, uh, older age groups tend to get a better response. I'm just going to come out. I'm going to come out and say this. 
I found when advertising uh, for mobile hairdressing, I found Google advertising on average got us, I think it was four times more response than Facebook, simply because, yeah, yeah. Now, now unfortunately, that's going to mean the mobile hairdressers out there, is, you're going to say, well, great, what, what you're showing me here, but I just, I'm going to be honest here, guys, I'm, it's an, I want to, I want to give you the advice of what I've learned that's going to get you the best bang for your buck, it's going to get you results. We find advertising on Google ads for mobile hairdressing got a lot better response, simply because people, whenever they're looking for a mobile hairdresser, they're looking for something pretty specific. They're looking for a hairdresser that can visit their house. So by targeting Google ads with the keywords, mobile hairdresser, mobile hairdresser near me, etc., we found that it got a lot more paying clients than Facebook. Now, that said, admittedly, we tested this after about a month saw that Google was getting the best results and then just turned off our Facebook ads and went with Google. The best, if you're going to run Facebook ads and you've had some pretty good response for your mobile hairdressing, I would definitely set up retargeting ads. Therefore, whoever clicks on your initial ad and shows interest in your mobile hairdressing services by creating a retargeting audience, you're going to get that ad in front of them again and again and again. Yeah, really good. Uh, re re retargeting ads is a whole different kettle of fish. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's like a two-hour training course on its own. So, but I would run if you if you've had good success on Facebook and, and Instagram for your mobile hairdressing business, learn how to run retargeting ads and run them in combination with your initial prospecting ads. So you're getting people that click and take and take take interest in your mobile hairdressing services. You can get your ad in front of them again and again and again. Yeah, really interesting. Um, and we've had a few more questions as well. And one of them was, should there always be a special offer on an ad? Oh, sorry, Scott, your um, audio's just gone. I don't know if you're on mute or whether it's just the internet. Uh, I haven't oh, we can hear you again. Can you yeah. <laughs> oh, it says the connection is unstable. <laughs> Okay, the short answer to that is when you are reaching out to a cold audience trying to bring in new clients, yes, you should always have an offer. Brand, uh, honestly, brand awareness on di for digital advertising is, is essentially to waste money. Um, um, that, this is what we've found. Now, look, if you, if you have got, if you're a big chain or you're, you've, you run a big business and you've got, uh, you, you, you want to allocate some of your marketing budget to brand awareness where you are promoting your brand only, Fine, but that should only be a small percentage. Or the only other time that it can be effective to a cold audience uh, when not promoting an offer is when you genuinely are the only business in your town that provides a specific service or treatment. So you can advertise it without, without an offer and incentive. You can just get it in front of people and they, oh, this place has that. And no, but, but be honest with yourself. You know, are you, be honest, be honest with yourself there. If you're, there aren't many, there aren't many salons I've come across that have a very specific treatment that literally no one else in their town does. But if you are in that, if you are in that zone, you might not need an offer. You've just got to get it out there that you have this. But but 99% of the businesses that I speak to offer a full hair or beauty menu or both. If when you are reaching out to a cold audience of people, you should always have an offer in place. Even if it's just the the like the green rooms one that I showed you, where it's just 10 euro or 10 pound off if a client spends 40 pound or more, just that little incentive is pretty much guaranteed to get you more response and more new clients than just promoting your brand. Yeah. And, and, and just, just, just to follow on from that, when you run an offer and incentive, the other massive advantage is someone has got to take action in order to get that offer, like I showed you. When they hit learn more, they've got to give you, that way you can lead them to a landing page where they can submit their details and then they have to state a booking code or something, something in order to get the offer. Mm. simply by doing it that way it becomes trackable so you can see exactly how many new clients your Facebook or Instagram ads are bringing in and then at the end of each month you can you can know if they're profitable mm. hopefully profitable and how much money they're making for you yeah and obviously for beauty and hair like before and after images are normally a big selling point about what they do would you recommend using before and after content images in ads yes yep before before and after is proven to be quite and what I would what I would say is even a before or after in a still image, 
is is not it, before and afters are fine, but use a carousel of images. So I showed you the carousel where you've got three or four different images. Literally use each one. Create uh, put in your best three or four mm. before and after images and create a carousel. Carousel of images. All what and, and what we've found always gets a better response than just a single image because it looks smarter mm. and it's, it's multiple images people can scroll through and it's, it just creates you know, the idea of Facebook and Instagram. It's this is interrupt advertising. People don't visit social media to look at ads. Mm. You know, they visit social media to see what their friends are doing and make comments and stalk people, etc. So in order for an ad to in order to people firstly to, to get their attention and sell the click and get them clicking, you want to create ads that jump out of their screen that wow people. And we tend to find you can do this a carousel or a video, slideshow video, etc. tend to a much more attention grabbing. Mm. And we've had a couple of questions as well about home-based salons, because I guess we haven't really touched on them yet. Um, and people are just asking about if there's any tips of how they should rework their ads if they're home-based. And also, you said obviously that Google ads work better for mobile therapists. Is that the same for home-based salons? Home-based, um, I think home-based is nowhere near as specific audience as mobile hairdressers. Like my experience with our mobile hairdressing company, it was a lot of senior citizens. Uh, it was a lot of uh, people um, in, in wheelchairs and a lot of people who were, you know, people who just literally could, it was uh, people with, uh, with, with babies people who simply could not physically get to a salon. Um, people visiting a home salons, I think, is a little bit more a broader audience. Um, the same principles as what I've shown you here apply. Like you can still, even if you're coming from home, you can dial up the social proof, put in your best reviews. I, mean, I presume, um, you, you know, if you've got some kind of review platform, I, I'm guessing if you work from home, you probably, you might not have a website. You probably focus more on your social media pages, like your, web, your Facebook and Instagram pages. Take the best reviews, take the best eight or 10 reviews, throw them in the description of your Facebook ads. The other thing too is what makes it worth? Not always, but typically home, visit from home hairdressers won't charge as much as salons, okay? That is a unique selling point as to why people should visit you at home and not a salon. Splash that all over your ad copy. State that you are, these are my prices, but typically you're getting a five stars, you know, I'm, State, uh, I'm, I'm Tony and Guy qualified. You know, state, state your experience. I, I've got 20 years in the industry, et cetera, et cetera. I can offer you significantly cheaper rates, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. The same rules apply and dial up your social proof, your best reviews, et cetera, mm. et cetera. That's brilliant. Thank you, Scott. Unfortunately, that's all that we have time for. Just for the people who are asking um, who've joined, at the minute that this live is over, you'll be able to watch this webinar on our Facebook page indefinitely. And it will also be loaded up to our IGTV this afternoon as well. So you can always go back and watch it again. Um, and also I put a link in for Scott's website, which is Salon Revenue Growth on um, in the Zoom chat and on Facebook as well. So if you did wanna get in contact with Scott, learn a little bit more about what he does, um, you can reach out to him through there. But I just wanted to say a massive thank you, Scott. It's been really interesting. We've had loads of questions. Loads of people have said this has been really great. Um, and Very thank welcome. you for kind of sharing your knowledge and advice with them. And hopefully this will help everyone reopen stronger when they can. Sure. And what I would say, guys, the strategy sessions we run come with absolutely no obligations. If, if you just need help in setting up your own ads, this is what we're here for. Book a session. We're more than happy to help you in any way possible. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Scott, and have a nice day. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Okay. And we will see you on the next PB Up Skills tomorrow. See you later, Thanks, guys. Amanda. Bye. Yeah. Thanks so much. Bye.